Hi, I'm Bashir Mohammed. I'm going to talk to you today about the Pew Research Center's third telephone survey of U.S. Muslims. We find that this study in U.S. Muslims is very important because it allows us to talk about the attitudes, beliefs, and demographic profile of this population. However, it's difficult to get a representative sample of U.S. Muslims. There are at least three difficulties that we encounter, and I'm going to tell you about how we overcome each of them in this video. First of all, they're a rare population. Muslims only represent about 1% of the U.S. population overall. And so if you were to just call people at random, you wouldn't get very many Muslims. Second, Muslims are a largely immigrant population. And so some of the people that we'd like to speak to are not going to be able to do an interview in English. And finally, we worry that Muslims may not be comfortable identifying themselves over the phone to a stranger. So I and my colleagues will talk about how we overcame each of these difficulties. Muslims represent about 1% of the US population which means that for every 100 Americans you survey, you can expect only about one to be Muslim. So if you wanted to use random sampling to survey 1,000 Muslims, this means that you'd have to interview about 100,000 adults in order to get your sample of just 1,000 Muslims. In practice, that takes way too long and is too complicated. So if simple random sampling isn't practical, how did we do this study? Well, we used a number of techniques that statisticians have developed for surveying rare populations and getting accurate national estimates. It starts by oversampling parts of the country where lots of Muslims live and undersampling parts of the country where fewer Muslims live. We also oversampled telephone numbers that are more likely to be servicing a Muslim household. Now it sounds like all of these approaches would leave us with a biased sample skewed toward Muslims who live in areas with more Muslims. But you have to bear in mind that we did use random sampling in other parts of the country to get a diverse sample of Muslims, and we can use weighting to fix those things. One of the other challenges we face in doing a survey like this one is that the Muslim American community is heavily composed of immigrants. In fact, surveys show that something like three in five Muslim Americans is an immigrant, and another one in five is the child of immigrants. Now it's true that many Muslim immigrants are highly skilled, highly educated professionals who come to the United States already able to speak English and to participate in a survey like ours. But that's not true of all of them. Some of them don't speak English. So what do we do to address that challenge? Well, simply put, we translated the survey into three other languages, Arabic, Farsi, and Urdu. Those are three of the languages most commonly spoken among Muslim immigrants in the United States. And then we hired interviewers capable of administering the survey in those languages. Now to be sure, most Muslims in the United States can speak English and most of our interviews were conducted in English. Still, we're confident that by translating the survey into these other languages, we really maximize our ability to represent the views of the entire Muslim American community, including immigrants. The third difficulty that we had to overcome was the possibility that Muslims may not be comfortable identifying themselves over the phone. Making sure that people are comfortable giving honest answers is something that survey researchers have to deal with all the time. The way that we do this is by taking time to build rapport. In this particular case, what we did is we asked a series of uh, less sensitive questions like, how satisfied are you with the way things are going in your life, before going on and asking religious identity. And the way we asked religious identity was we asked, what is your religious preference? Are you Christian, Buddhist, Hindu, Muslim, something else, etc. The idea being that we didn't want to single out Muslims as a specific group, but rather give people an opportunity to find themselves in a broader list. Even after that short warm-up, there are some people who are uncomfortable telling us their religious identity. And so we had a longer series of questions asking about political values, about the role of family, and then we circled back again and asked people to tell us their religious preference. At this point, we told them why we were asking. We explained that we're doing a survey of religious groups and we wanted for, re for research purposes to find out what their religion was to find out if they qualified. We find that this combination of taking time to build rapport and not singling out specific groups makes most people comfortable telling us their religious identity. So those are the main problems that we encountered and how we overcame them. Muslims are a relatively small population, they're a largely immigrant population, and they may not be comfortable identifying themselves over the phone. We feel that what we've been able to do is create a valuable resource for people who are interested in understanding the beliefs, practices, and demographic profile of Muslims in the United States, and we hope you agree.